Believe it or not, there was a time where we sewed garments only with a needle and thread. Think about that. No sewing machines, no sergers, no automated, whatever it may be. But with that, how did they secure their stitch? How did they keep it from slipping out and undoing itself? Well, that's what I'm gonna cover today in this video about knots. What's up everyone? It's Audra. Welcome or welcome back to my channel, New Heritage Wool, where I share tutorial videos on different techniques in tailoring to help you master your tailoring projects at home. I also document my personal tailoring projects here on this channel to inspire your next tailoring project. If you haven't checked out my first tailoring project here on this channel, I'll link the video in the description below so you can go check that out. But before I get started, make sure you click the subscribe button and ring the notification bell so you can stay up to date on all of the latest tips and tricks I have for you on sewing techniques here at New Heritage Wool. Let's get started. As you know, knots are not anything new in this world. We have been creating them since basically the beginning of time. And we definitely know their purpose. And that is to keep things from unwinding or from coming apart, however you want to put it, we know that it secures everything in place. So in today's video, I will show you three styles of knots that you can choose from, so that way you can find the one that suits you best. All right, to begin the tailor's knot, make sure to have a threaded needle. Once you have that, you're going to put the end of the thread in your left hand and the needle in your right hand. Next, you're going to place the end of your thread on your pointer finger of the right hand, twist your thread around that needle three to four times. Next, you're going to use your feeder thread to push down those twists on the needle, switch hands, and then pull your needle out without releasing the twists. By doing that and going to the end of the thread, you then create a knot. I'm going to do this again in a replay, so hopefully you guys can get it. So again, thread in your left hand, needle in your right, place the thread on your right pointer finger, and the needle goes and secures that down, twisting your thread three times, four times, whatever is comfortable, and then you use your thread to push down those twists on the needle. I typically switch hands when I do this, but if you're able to do it with not switching hands, go for it. So next we're going to do a twist knot. To start the twist knot, you're going to gently twist the thread around your pointer finger and then securing it in place with your thumb. Now here comes the tricky part. So you're going to slide your thumb along your pointer finger across the thread and pull the thread in your right hand to create the knot. That is the best way I can describe this knot. So I'm going to put a replay on here just so maybe watching it a couple of times will help you make that knot successful. Hey guys, I just want to pop in here really quick and tell you about my free PDF. Six tips to begin tailoring. If you are someone who has wanted to learn how to tailor but didn't know where to start because of being overwhelmed and not knowing what supplies you need or how to improve your stitches, well, all of that is in this PDF and it's free and just for you. So the link to get that PDF is in the description below. So make sure to go check it out and let me know what you think in the comments below. Okay, so this one, knot number three, is probably technically not a knot. Actually, I know it's not a knot. Um, it's actually just back stitch, but it is yet another way to start off a stitch and it still be secured. You don't have to worry about it coming loose and then over time undoing your whole entire seam. So with that said, let's jump into it. So next is the backstitch knot, which, like I said, it's not technically a knot. It's just a way to knot off your stitches 
before you start and also a great option for whenever you stop on a seam line. In order to do this knot, um, you just need to know the back stitch. And so once you have your needle threaded, so you'll see here that I decided to start on the top side of the fabric, but do whichever is easiest for you. And you pull your thread um, all the way through and then leaving about a three to five inch tail. And then you just go back where you started in and go on top of that. Now here you can do that on top of that stitch a couple of times before deciding to move forward with a running stitch or continuing on with the back stitch all the way down a seam line, which I'll get into different seam line stitches in later videos that I have planned. And then just to show you, giving it a little tug to show you that it is secure and it's not going to just come right out. So here I'm just showing you I'm gonna do a running stitch or a run, yeah, a straight stitch or a running stitch, depending on what you call it. Now, if you're working with fabric that is a thin fabric, definitely consider doing a small, small back stitch just so the bulk is not there. Now you have three ways to knot off before starting your stitch line. Let me know in the comments below which one you will use, which one's your favorite, which one you hate the most maybe, like me it's the second one. Or also if you know a different way of knotting, let me know in the comments below. I'd love to hear a different style of knot in case it's something I haven't covered or ever seen before. I'd love to look it up. If you've made it this far and haven't subscribed yet, make sure to show some love on that subscribe button. Hit the notification bell so you don't miss the next video. Thank you for watching and I will see you on the next one.